Hey guys, welcome to Concrete Step 4 Part 6. This is Part 6 of a series of videos that I'm doing on replacing these concrete steps. In this video, I'll be placing the bottom area of this entrance. appreciate all your support. Guys, you should definitely check out the previous videos to see the jackhammering, some of the forming, everything that went into this uh, project prior to this video. I've also started adding some of the tools that I've used. Uh, so if you check out the description, I've put together a tool list that you can actually purchase from. Alright guys, let's get started. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just uh, filling in the bottom of the step. And I'm just using a spade shovel. Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm using a magnesium hand float. And uh, I'm just troweling the bottom of the step. And I'm actually creating a flat area by troweling from the bottom of the step. Then, I'll pour the concrete on the outside of the form. From the outside of the form, I'll then flatten and shape the concrete towards the bottom of the step. I'll be doing is essentially using the hand float to flatten the concrete so that there's no humps or dips and uh, some of the tricks that really come in handy especially in tighter areas like this is just circling the trowel as you'll see me sort of circling and uh, checking the concrete by going back and forth like that. When I'm floating and troweling under the step, essentially what I have is the bottom of the form has been cut on a 45 degree angle and that allows me to see the bottom of the step. Um, you know, it's really important to be able to see where you're troweling, what you're troweling and, and making sure that you can, you can access that area um, to create a, a, a surface that's flat and smooth. Alright, so what I've done there is I've just cut back the expansion foam. Sometimes when I'm pouring, I'll leave a little bit extra expansion foam just in case I need it uh, for an area. So what I did there is I just cut that foam back uh, to the corner of the house. So what I always like to do is I always check the, the concrete before I move on. I want to make sure that everything is as it's supposed to be. Alright guys, so I do a lot of the filming myself. Uh, I'll just set up a tripod and I actually use a Canon tripod uh, with a smartphone attachment. And I also shoot the films with a 4K and 8K lens using a... Um, Samsung Note 20 5G. Uh, so that's th th this has been a good setup and uh, I highly recommend it. So what we're doing right now is me and the ready mix driver are just uh, taking one of the shoots off to give us a bit more work room. And uh, a lot of the time when I work with the ready mix drivers, um, you know, we tend to collaborate on how we're going to do this. Um, sometimes they have suggestions uh, or ways that they've seen uh, that work 
better. So I always listen to these guys. These guys see a lot of concrete finishers every day and um, some of the techniques are, are interesting and uh, so I like to learn uh, more and uh, listening to these guys is, is really important. One of the things that I really can't stress enough is uh, when concrete trucks are backing up or the chutes are going up and down, uh, just staying out of the way is, is really important. And guys too, if you ever see somebody doing a driveway and the concrete finishers are pouring the driveway, please slow down uh, because these, uh, these guys are working in a safe work zone and sometimes the drivers have to react quickly. So please give these uh, ready mix drivers a bit of space to do their job. Alright guys, so I just like to lift the rebar up by hand, um, that way I know how high it's going into the slab. Uh, if it's too high, sometimes the rebar can actually shadow and show through on the surface. Uh, so it's really important to know exactly where that rebar is being placed. Alright guys, so this would be considered about a 4 inch slump. And the way that you can tell is the concrete is standing up in a pile, just like that. So what I'm doing is just working the concrete around to the furthest points, making sure that I don't have too much concrete. It's hard to get rid of after this, um, you know, there's nowhere to really put it. So you want to make sure, you know, you have a pail or something like that, a wheelbarrow or an area to put the concrete down if you have too much. Alright, hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And please leave a comment, I'd like to hear your feedback. And if you need concrete work within the Waterloo region, feel free to give me a shout out at theartofconcrete.ca. Thanks for watching.